Let's bring Kevin Hanks and Renita Young. And we can't forget to also mix in a little AI just in time, Renita. Alphabet's got this event, and so you got NVIDIA and Google rocking today. They're rocking, rocking, rocking. It's because this Alphabet event, first of all, it's just the first day of it, right? And they've already got people charged up about their new partnerships and then the extensions and expansions of the existing ones. One of those is with NVIDIA, where they're now going to be able to enable its customers to build massive generative AI models right now. And they're also going to make the newest NVIDIA chip available to Google Cloud customers. That's the H100, among other things with this partnership. And obviously, Alphabet Google shares are higher today, but NVIDIA shares are close to its record high. And right now, if they close above 485.83, It'll be the first time it has $1.2 trillion market cap for the first time ever. Wow. You know, it'll be the first time it's above that number. And so the company also announced several other different partnerships. One is with GE on an appliances app that will enable you to create recipes based off of whatever's in your refrigerator. Whoa. I like that. I Me had too. that idea years ago, by the way. Should have moved just a, on it. I should have moved on it. Not for a generative See, AI tool, are still beating but AI. for like a TikTok channel. I had right. that idea. I should have done it, right? But they're also teaming up with GM to power OnStar uh, Interactive Virtual Assistant for people who are driving. Just a little bit more help while they're doing that. Also a collaboration with Fox Sports to maximize their content archive several different things. Also, not to forget its own tools. They're going to amp up the Gmail systems for professional tools for companies that use the Gmail systems within the company there. Right. And they say that this is really a strategic play against Microsoft. I mean, the tools that they're offering for Gmail are the same cost as Microsoft's 365 Pilot anyway. Seems like these companies uh, are going to be butting heads a bit in terms of the AI race. So first it was all the talk about Bing displacing Alphabet search prowess, but I gotta say that seems like still a bit of a pipe dream for Microsoft and shares of Alphabet are the ones making fresh year-to-date highs. Mm -hmm. Microsoft, of course, made all-time highs, but then fell back below it around the earnings, so it's kind of looking like slow and steady perhaps wins the race uh, for Alphabet here in the AI situation. That's a good way to put it. Uh, Kevin, what do you think? I mean, is this a bunch of news events coinciding at the right time? Alphabet reminding us that they're still really breaking ground on their AI growth potential. Some nice soft data for the doves out there this morning. And then the crypto uh, folks get their news. Um, how do these things all fit together? What do we make of the session? Yeah, there's a there, there's a perfect storm feel to today's sure. trade, Oliver. You've got the great economic data, you've got individual stocks data, and you've got the leadership reassuming. Listen, we we, we talked about this on Fast Market today about Nvidia. If you think these large cap tech firms are seeing where the trends are, seeing where that subscription revenue is, and everyone's gonna compete for it. So AI, you know AMD's gonna come out with something in the back half of the year. You know all these other firms, Oracle claims that they're, they're competing in AI. There's gonna be competition in AI, just like there was in streaming. Everyone sees the hot topic and sector of an economy and all the R&D and capital that these firms have sitting on their balance sheets flushes to get into that business and capture some of it. Look at Netflix, how they're the leader in streaming and what did competition do? Stocks $270 off its all time high. So I think competition is what can come into this and bring some of these prices down, make everything a little more affordable, Oliver. But in terms of the economic data, Listen, there, this data today, the beginning of a really big, heavy week for economic data, you know, th this couldn't be better, right? Because Jerome Powell's now got a 3.5% unemployment rate with job openings coming down. You got uh, consumer confidence coming down just a little, not 
scary data, but softer data. And that's adding to today's trade. But there's an old saying in trading, Oliver, still a lot of time to ruin your week. So, <laughs> so brace yourself here. There's a lot more data coming down the pipeline that could upset the apple cart. Couple looks at wages and inflation. That, that 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 could be a little tricky here late in the week, but really good start to, to the data week that we're having, Oliver. I'm glad you said it because I was kind of circumventing there, you know. Uh, and as you've said before, I'm too young to be as cynical as I am, so I'm glad you said it this time <laughs> right. and not me, right? Because uh, this is a piece of data uh, from the economy, and we've got arguably more important pieces coming. So it's a good day. It's definitely in the right direction for what folks want to get some relief from the inflation trend of the last couple weeks here. But we got a lot more to get through. Uh, thanks for taking us through the action here, Renita Young, Kevin yep. Hanks. Good stuff, team.